I am Sterling Allen here. I we're at the Tesla Tech Conference 2011 in Albuquerque, New Mexico, July 29th. And uh, I'm with Vernon Roth here. This is actually the second part of a two-part uh, video series. The first part, we'll have a link there in the bottom in this YouTube video where you can see where he described this uh, alchemical process where in his uh, electrolysis scenario, he's found that some of the uh, elements that are in the water in s certain electrolysis scenarios are duplicated, whether they're minerals or whether they are chemicals, chemical compounds. And the question I didn't ask him was, what about molecules like insulin, for example? Could you? He, he found that elements that are within the water are duplicated, so that if you start with one part, in some cases he, he saw with the uh, cycling of the water, they actually had 13 times as much of that element at the end than they had at the beginning. And this is true with gold uh, particles um, and with some fairly co complex uh, chemical compounds uh, that, that he described. That's in part A. We, we went through all that, kind of the philosophy behind it, and uh, the part, this video here is to describe the apparatus. He's uh, actually uh, agreed to go ahead and take things apart and show us exactly how he makes this. Not exactly. I mean, this is going to be fairly technical, um, but you know, it's not like he's going to show you, you know, A to Z. But he is going to give us uh, a good overview, going through each component. And now that I've given that explanation, I would like to go ahead and turn it over. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and uh, control the camera. Um, but I'd like Vernon to recap what I just said in his words to begin with, and, and uh, then we'll, we'll make this, cut this video into however segments we need to as part B of this series. Okay. All right, let's go for it. <coughs> well, thank you, Sterling, and thank you for everybody for being here. And we're going to move on forward. So I think that uh, one of the most important things that we can, you know, that we can do with our um, energy and for the future is to find out more and uh, better ways to use water in our world. <clears throat> and that's really a, a huge portion of my research as many of you have uh, experienced the, the spark of life water and its various incarnations and what, the, what it's used for. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, really my driving fo force is to find out different ways to use water in the world. And so that's what I do with hydrogen and I make hydrogen and oxygen from uh, from electricity and water, so that's what we're talking about here. And this is a basic cell. This is what we call a dry cell. Hey, before you get into oh, that, yeah. I, um, this is actually take two. The first one we thought the camera was rolling and it wasn't. Right. Um, tell us about what happened with um, after you gave your presentation, two people came up to you. Oh, um, uh, yesterday after I gave my presentation, uh, two people independently came up to me and said, uh, we also have experienced the multiplication of elements that uh, we, we did not expect at all using energy, magnetic fields, and uh, geometrical structures. And it's occurring on a, much, on a much smaller scale than what we're experiencing here, but it is occurring. And so they said, we are so glad that, uh, that someone else talked about it because now we know that we're not crazy. Now, that we, now we know that this is actually reality. So it's very exciting stuff, and this is going to, I feel like it's going to be happening more and more. And many people may already actually be doing it, not knowing what's going on. So with that said, we will start with, um, we'll start with hydrogen. And why don't we start where I started, and what we have over here is a conventional, uh, well, it uses um, some principles of Bob Boyce's uh, work with hydrogen. It uses some principles of, uh, of um, George Wiseman and Ewell Brown's work with hydrogen. It's a simple hydrogen cell with parallel stainless steel plates in it. You input 120 volts DC, and this is not supposed to be in there. <clears throat> and the gas comes out of the hydrogen unit, goes into the reservoir, which acts like a, uh, a trap in an expansion chamber to trap vapors. And then the gas feeds from the reservoir into a first stage bubbler, which is, this is a safety bubbler. And it, and it also serves as, a, as a, a wash for the gas to wash off any sodium hydroxide. 
and then the gas escapes out the top. And this little hose you see down at the bottom is the water feed to the um, hydrogen device. So gas and a little bit of water comes out here, and the water returns to the bottom and, and, and fills the device. This is a small device. It, uh, well, not, not, a, not a very small device, but it's a, uh, it's a simple device, excuse me. And this was uh, commissioned by a friend of mine to run a, uh, to help run his diesel generator on his, uh, his mountain retreat. And it uses a solar panels, a set of solar panels, about, uh, about a thousand watts of solar panel goes into this and boosts his hydrogen, or boosts his uh, diesel engine. Um, <clears throat> Once it leaves that bumper, just just on a yes. tangent, what yeah. kind of improvements does he see on the diesel generator using that? Well, what we calculated was that uh, because there is no parasitic drag from an alternator to feed his uh, to feed his engine, using this and one other piece of technology that's not mine, so I can't talk about it, but it's a passive device. Uh, he we calculated that he will get about a ninety percent boost in his diesel generator system. So solar so it's power. It's almost a double of his. Uh, almost the, almost the a double, absolutely. And then that's taken into account the wattage from the solar panels. Yes, mm -hmm. that take, it's like a voltage multiplier. We're using you were using water instead okay. of, uh, uh, and we're using water and hydrogen. Um, that is not what you're going to get if you have a parasitic drag and you're running it off of your own generator. That's just with the solar panels. But he found that it was cheaper for him to do that and use a generator as his existing power source than it was to, to install a big solar system with batteries and all the electrical components that would go along with that. This is more plug and play for him and he, and he likes that. So, so that's, with that's one, what this one is built for. With 1,000 watt um, solar panel, he was able to power his house. 1,000 watts and, and a diesel generator. And a diesel generator, yeah, right. Yeah, a diesel generator. Right, so he's running his house on the diesel generator with yes. a 1,000 watt solar panel. Right, essentially. Okay. And 90, and 10% and of the normal Do, fuel. Is this augmenting, so he has, he's also plugged into the grid or is he off-grid? Uh, he will be off-grid once he goes this way because his electricity will be cheaper with this method than it will be off of the conventional uh, grid system. So this is a, also what I brought to uh, show a, a, a simple system, the most simple system that you can uh, that you can deal that you can create. Hydrogen device, reservoir, bubbler, and this is very safe and it's uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's got a lot of uh, safeties built in, especially at the end when the water or when the hydrogen comes out of there and goes into here, this is our flashback arrestor and, and the last line of defense uh, for this system, which it's filled with water and it bubbles through it and then the gas goes to the generator. And if we were running a torch, we were going to run a torch, say for welding in a welding shop, one more system would be installed here and that is this uh, flashback arrestor. And, and this is something off the shelf? This is something off the shelf, you buy them for Forty to sixty dollars a pair. You get it at any welding shop. I recommend. I highly recommend it. Um, and it's called a flashback it's arrestor. It's called a flashback or a sparkback arrestor. Um, they use them for oxygen and acetylene torches, as well as hydrogen torches as well. Now so that's on, what I recommend. On this system down here, are you using any kind of uh, conditioning of the DC that's coming into it? Are you using it? No, uh, we're not. Um, it's straight line DC and. I went with uh, I went with straight line DC because it's easier to work with. The only current control that I that I uh, put in the system is the number of plates and the uh, concentration of, of, of catalyst. When I started working with this, I started working with the electronic gizmos and the and the pulse width modulators and all that. Burned them up pretty quick in, in my experimental phase and realized um, I wanted something a little more foolproof. And so I developed. A, a way of calculating number of plates to the current ratios that I wanted, and also uh, the catalyst, uh, the, the amount of catalyst in the system could help control the current flow. Did we go over those numbers this morning? We have not yet, and so I was gonna I was gonna outline that because okay. I Great. I can illustrate it very easily with Great. these. Okay. Um, but essentially, I'll, t I'll just give you the numbers right now. Uh, <clears throat> maximum, two point two three volts per cell, maximum uh, one quarter uh, watt, or excuse me, one quarter amp per square inch of plate surface. So for instance, 
we have a six by six plate here, so that's 36 square inches. And if we were using the, the six by six, not including the ring in here, just ignore that. If we were using the six by six plate, putting current across that, our, our limit would be nine amps because, <coughs> excuse me, uh, nine divided by 36 is of course four. So that's our uh, one quarter amp per square inch. That's the maximum amount. I actually like to run about, uh, about if, if using that plate, I like to run about five amps just to make certain that there's a, a nice, uh, nice margin of safety there. So whether you had mm -hmm. two plates or a hundred plates, you go based on one surface you're not going to exceed this cell system. That's right. By five amp, by by nine amps. That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, this system, you know, we'll we'll, we'll get into that. So we've got, um, if we were using these plates, we would go uh, nine amps. Since the since we've actually cut off surface area in this device, I go less than nine amps, and then we go to uh, two point three five volts or 2.34 volts per cell, so there's No one, more than 2.3. No more, because mm -hmm. you'll start to burn up your plates. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six cells in there, so you would not go more than eh, 14 volts. Okay, for, 14, for the layperson, I'm, okay. s I'm seeing, you know, at 24, yeah. so what this are you is, calling a cell? This is a, this is a double unit, okay? okay. There's a, there's a negative plate in the center and a positive plate on one side and a positive plate on the other. So what you're actually seeing is two, uh, two sets of hydrogen, uh, uh, a, a two stacked hydrogen device. And so going from this side to this side, what are you calling a cell? The cell is the different distance between plates. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six cells in there. And then we go to the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm sorry. There's uh, no. There's six. Yeah, yeah there's that's six. six. Okay. Six. So there's six on each side with a with a with a negative center. So there's a, a positive yeah. and a negative. Positive two, on the two, outside. Two sets of positive and negative. Yeah. Twelve piece of metal mm -hmm. makes a six cell plate. Yeah. Okay. And this this appears to be the conventional cell that you can buy on almost any hydrogen cell device, but it's not. And we'll get into the difference. But we have we have two inputs. Fuel in, or excuse me, water in, hydrogen out. It's 30, 30 What's up? Plates, Say what? 13 plates. Yeah, there's 13 plates there. Oh, there's um, 13 pieces of metal? Yeah, okay. 13 pieces of metal. Uh, <clears throat> negative in the center, and you can see I slip on a little uh, Negative spake. or neutral? Negative. You, you call it neu neutral? Negative. Neutral are the ones in between the negative and the positive. Okay. You just put on a little spade connector on the bottom, slip it on, and uh, um, and then the positive go up there on a little, a little spade connector on the edges. I sell this for about th for uh, 300 bucks. This is actually my breather unit. I use this to um, breathe Brown's gas, but we'll get into that as we as we move forward. So that is the essential. Uh, that is essentially what we're dealing with here. Only on that one, it's a larger scale. So there's uh, there's uh, 60 plates in that device with a nice nice little water jacket on either side to make certain things stay cool. And 60 plates takes 120 volts, so that's two volts per cell. So, uh, or, you know, thereabouts. And on that one, we're dealing with a little bit larger larger plates, so I can actually go up to 12 amps per, per, uh, per um, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 amps for the whole unit, because there's the, the plates are actually larger. So for the voltage, it's additive for the number of cells. That's right. And for amp, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, based on the surface of one single cell. That's right. As, as far as what a, max. We're in a series system, mm -hmm. so it's the it's the the amperage is based off of one plate, versus the uh, the voltage being based off of the entire set of plates. Okay. So that's a little bit of the technicalities that we uh, we go into with this with this type of hydrogen device, um, and these are these are rules that have been tried out many tried and proven many times. If you go over amperage, you'll start to crystallize your plates, and they won't produce gas very well. If you go over voltage, you'll start to uh, break down your uh, you'll, you'll start to break down your plates, and you don't and you don't want that. And, and let me ask rules or whether they are chemicals, chemical compounds. 
And the question I didn't ask him was, what about molecules like insulin, for example? Could you, he, he found that elements that are within the water are duplicated. So that if you start with one part, in some cases he, he saw with the uh, cycling of the water, they actually had 13 times as much of that element at the end than they had at the beginning. And this is true with gold uh, particles. Um, and with some fairly co complex uh, chemical compounds uh, that, that he described. That's in part A. We, we went through all that, kind of the philosophy behind it, and uh, the part, this video here is to describe the apparatus. He's uh, actually uh, agreed to go ahead and take things apart and show us exactly how he makes this. Not exactly. I mean, this is going to be fairly technical, um, but you know, it's not like he's going to show you, you know, A to Z, but he is going to give us uh, a good overview going through each component. And now that I've given that explanation, I would... I have Sterling Allen here. We're at the Tesla Tech Conference 2011 in Albuquerque, New Mexico, July 29th. And uh, I'm with Vernon Roth here. This is actually the second part of a two-part a video series. The first part we'll have a link there in the bottom in this YouTube video where you can see where he described this uh, alchemical process where in his uh, electrolysis scenario he's found that some of the uh, elements that are in the water in certain electrolysis scenarios are duplicated whether they're min future is to find out more and uh, better ways to use water in our world. <clears throat> and that's really a, a huge portion of my research, as many of you have uh, experienced the, the spark of life water and its various incarnations and what, the, what it's used for. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, really my driving fo force is to find out different ways to use water in the world. And so that's what I do with hydrogen. And I make hydrogen and oxygen from, uh, from electricity and water. So that's what we're talking about here. And this is a basic cell. This is what we call a dry cell. I'd like to go ahead and turn it over. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and uh, control the camera. Um, but I'd like Vernon to recap what I just said in his words to begin with. And, and uh, then we'll, we'll make this, cut this video into however segments we need to as part B of this series. Okay. All right, let's go for it. <clears throat> well, thank you, Sterling, and thank you for everybody for being here. And we're going to move on forward. So I think that uh, one of the most important things that we can, you know, that we can do with our um, energy and for the 